So I successfully self-represented at a criminal trial. So okay. a member of the Jehovah's Witness Church filed a protection order against me. Okay. And on the 16th of August, I was arrested and released on these conditions. Um, which will help you appreciate what the eight months of hell that I went through mm -hmm. was like. Uh, I have never been arrested. I have no criminal record. Mm -hmm. I consented to these conditions without appreciating what was happening. I had been awake for 14 hours. Mm -hmm. So these were the conditions that I agreed to. Okay. And then... And the big deal of those is that to not be within 100 meters of any temporary literature display operated by members of the Jehovah's Witness Church is impossible. Right. For somebody who relies on public transit and lives downtown yeah. and shops downtown. Yeah. Uh, and for me to have had no direct or indirect contact with anyone known by me to be a member of the Jehovah's Witness Church was next to impossible. Mm -hmm. So for eight months, I adhered to these conditions while trying to navigate the legal complexities of the charges against me and how to successfully defend myself. Mm -hmm. I suffered distress, anxiety, uh, financial loss, of course, as a result of it. Although the arresting officers... Uh, suggested on the booking report that the approval standards were substantiated for criminal harassment, intimidation, and obstructing officiating clergymen in the course of uh, carrying out their duties, but the Crown didn't approve those charges, but did pursue right. the protection order that was filed by someone who never made themselves known to me in the course of my having my interactions with them. Okay, so that was um, dismissed, I guess. Right? Yes, yes. The judge, quote, uh, Reginald P. Harris, ruled that no evidence of a direct or indirect threat was presented, therefore he did not approve the peace bond. Okay. Um, so, okay, so you would like to bring a claim against the Jehovah Witnesses for... Like Abuse of human rights, breach of charter rights. Yeah. False reporting. Yeah. Just using the police and the legal system to silence an outspoken critic. Mm hmm So, um, I can tell you that it's going to be hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, there's, okay, so there's a tort of defamation, um, which is like slander. You probably, maybe you've heard of slander. Sure. Slander. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's if basically they've, said things about you that are untrue um, that lowered, lowered your reputation, mm -hmm. basically, in the eyes mm -hmm. of the community. Um, so, and then there's a bunch of defenses that they can, they can say. Uh, there's like fair comment, which is like, you know, it's a reasonable opinion. Um, there's other ones like uh, qualified privilege. Um, that, you know, if I had a duty to report something, that sort of thing. Um, the one problem with defamation, or uh, one, so one, it's going to be hard to prove, like, your damages, mm -hmm. right? Like, how did this actually, because just the sort of, you know, even though, uh, like, in how much stress it caused you and that sort of thing, like, the defamation has to be about a statement, so it has to be that, like, someone said a statement to someone else about you, right? Um, so the, how much harm that statement actually caused you will probably be pretty hard to sort of actually prove. Yeah. Also, you have to bring it, bring the claim in BC Supreme Court, right? Which is like opens you up to a lot of costs, um, and um, you know it's a lot more expensive and a lot more complicated than the um, than the lower courts and the small claims courts. Right. Right. Um, so then, so that would be one possibility, um, and you have to plead like the particulars of like what particular statements that they did this. Did this. Okay. There's also a tort called the tort of malicious prosecution. Mm -hmm. um, that though is quite hard to prove, especially about, um, especially as it relates to people other than the police, or sorry, not the police, but like, it's, yeah, like it's except outside of sort of the government, like the police, the prosecutor, to like sort of third parties for like making a police report. Um, 
I think it's pretty hard to prove. There's not that many cases on it. Um, or that, you know, people have been able to establish it, I guess mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would have to be that you um, prove that you're proving that they're taking, that they're doing this with malice, like sort of intentionally with malice. Yeah, well, I've, I've do video documented all of my interactions with them. Mm -hmm. And I can prove that they would say one thing to me mm -hmm. and then say something completely different to the police for the sake of presenting themselves as the one suffering harm, suffering mm -hmm. suffering psychological harm to get the police on their side. The member of the Jehovah's Witness Church who appeared mm -hmm. at my trial, she was deliberately trying to affect her testimony emotionally for the sake of persuading the judge in a way that my video yeah. documenting of her behavior at the time proves. No, I'm just trying to like think about what actual like legal claims you could have, right? Okay. So that's what I'm saying. Tortious defamation, uh, uh, tort of uh, malicious prosecution. Yeah, malicious prosecution, okay. um, assault. Assault is like the threat of, mm -hmm. of uh, hitting you or whatever. Okay. And battery is basic is what we would call assault. Gotcha. Um, and okay so but then like I said I was like I was I'm sort of cautioning you that like actually starting a claim and proving a claim on any of these things is going to be um, pretty g difficult and probably pretty difficult right. to prove that you actually suffered damages right unless you right. were injured unless you sort of um, lost work as a result of it I did, yeah. but that was probably as a result of the prosecution, right? Uh, that was a result so of like the, the condition. Yeah. So to prove anything on that, you're going to have to prove that that was malicious prosecution. Right. You know what I mean? That they intentionally brought the protection order, they just wanted me arrested knowing that I would have to consent to these conditions, which would mean I yeah. couldn't work, I couldn't travel. I, was I don't know if they'd have to, to know United that, States. but they intended to do it with malice and like, you know, yeah. there wasn't a reasonable basis for them to think. It's so the malice. A, it's the malice. Yeah. So that that's is a, there. Yeah. I mean, it is a hard thing to, to prove that, you know, it wasn't legitimate, right? Like, right. If, you know, if the prosecutor thought that there was enough there yeah. to take it on, it's usually hard to prove right. that that was really not the case. Right. Because um, I, I have, like, I have video, intimate video documentation yeah. of members of the Jehovah's Witness Church consciously lying to the police, lying to me, mm -hmm. threatening me with the police. Yeah. Well, oh, I mean, so okay, so that's, you know, that probably sounds like the defamation. Right. Right? If you know, you what about <laughs> breach of charter rights? Is there not a way so, to... So, um, that doesn't work against the Jehovah Witnesses because they're not, the char charter rights only work for um, the government. Like okay. you only have charter rights against the government. Gotcha. Or the like government uh, okay. agency or cool. something like that. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, so maybe I should pursue action against the police then for not fully investigating. It's, you know, pretty hard to do, right? Like it's pretty hard to prove that, you know, that they were intending the malice against you, right? That they're not just you know, they got one person says this thing, one person says another thing. This could be something serious if that person is right. You know, right. so then. But we members of the Jehovah's Witness Church install themselves in public places to advertise and to try to recruit into their religion. Mm -hmm. Former members of the religion are in a position to put questions to them mm -hmm. about the religion for the purpose of educating the public in a way that the public is never going to be educated otherwise. Yeah. And this is the kind of thing that they will resort to to silence ex-members. Right, right. So I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is, in terms of the breach of the charter rights. Okay. You know, to add to add the government about it, like I don't see what you're telling me doesn't seem to do like anything about that the police or that the prosecutor right. didn't do their job, right? Right. If right. they're, you know, someone's telling them that this person is, you know, doing bothering us and doing all these bad things, like what are the police really supposed to do, right? They're supposed to fully investigate before taking somebody to jail for a criminal harassment and intimidation charge when the uh, approval standards were Yeah, but I'm so saying you have to prove that they did it with like malice, I think, right? Okay. 
So like. Well, it's like me calling the police to lie to them to get you sort of tied up. Yeah. With them. I mean, I no, I'm sure, but I'm sure if that happened. It did. Well, no, but if it, uh, but if it happens, right? The police can't say, well, I'm not going to investigate this crime until I know for sure it happened, right? Because what, you know, what if it really did happen and that person, you know, is killed because of it, right? All I'm saying is that it would be pretty, I think it would be pretty hard to sort of prove your claims against the police. Unless something really, really bad ha- went wrong, yeah. you don't get anything for the fact of how it disrupted your life or people who spend, you know, two years in jail before the trial, they don't, you don't get anything for that. Which, right, right, right. You know, it has to be something pretty bad. Yeah. Or but none of it would have happened if it hadn't been for the 40 calls yeah. that members of the Jehovah's Witness Church yeah. placed. Yeah. Okay. So, um... While I was exercising the same fundamental freedom that they exercised. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, okay, so if you want to start a claim, mm-hmm. I think the point is, what do you do next, right? Yes. Okay, so if you want to bring a defamation claim, um, that needs to be done in the BC Supreme Court. Okay. It's all very new territory, because what I did, no one, never, no one has ever done, right? But now that I have this precedent set with the judge's ruling, and he saw the video evidence, so... My interest is in making sure that they don't do to me, uh, do to someone else what they've done to me. Thank you.